What do you got, Jess? You playing with our body? You playing with our body? <laughs> Hi everyone. Come and see this. Yeah, it's another beautiful day in Gloucester. Here's the tub rolled back in position now after it was lifted out by the wind and the chassis sat there. Soaking wet, as you can see. And yeah, we got another on the Mustangs out here as well. Soaking wet, as you can see. I don't think it's stopped raining since bloody Friday. Anyway, um, we need to get on with getting these frames done, don't we? It's the engine there still on its stand. It's just playing with her ball. So over here, on this Clark lifting table, transfer case down there, as you can see, and then there's the gearbox and bits of the transfer case. That's all going to have to be well covered up before I do anything else. And you can see this is the um, this is the frame that I made for the rear end. And I've made these little gussets on the bottom. Oops, turn it over. Made these gussets on the bottom, and they're ready to weld in, as you can see there. So that'll stop it sort of wanting to wanting to, wanting to twist. And what is quite incredible with this, I'll just show you. I can slot those two tubes in there like that. Look, look at that it stays there. It just stays there. <laughs> so really chuffed with that. So we'll get those brackets uh, on the bottom welded on today and um, we're going to make a start on lifting the front. Now I haven't really decided yet exactly how I'm going to do that but um, I'll let you guys join me on the journey. Okay so chassis is in the garage now and there's the front frame mocked up but just before we talk about that I want to talk about this. Now Look at the angle of my differential. Okay, it's probably better to go on the other side actually. Look at the angle of my diff. Look how much it's pointing up. Okay, let's come under here, you'll see it. See how it's pointing upwards? This is what happens when you do a suspension lift without actually um, changing your lower arms. These arms here, the radius arms. This is obviously higher because it's got no weight on it. So what happens is as you raise the chassis, it's pivoting around these pivot points here and then what's happening is the axle is, is falling away so if you can imagine if the chassis was lifted up another two feet that diff would be kind of like this so this is the reason you fit the uh, aftermarket lower arms or you can fit the offset bushes down in in here and in here because the thing is if if you don't what's happening is you're changing your kingpin inclination. So basically what's happening is the actual is, the actual is tipping forward and it's changing your, if you like, you're changing your caster. So um, actually yeah, I think kingpin king, king inclination is also to do with camber, isn't it? But basically what you're doing, you're tipping, you're tipping the axle forward and you're changing your steering axis and it will make the vehicle very, very skittish. So it's always worth getting, when you do a lift, it's worth getting the lower arms or the bushes or whatever so you can bring the diff back down and keep the axle in its right orientation and, it's and um, you can also see that when you do lift the chassis up that the springs want to pop out of their seats you can see the gap there but anyway more of that later so here is the front member which is going to be used for hanging the chassis off and what we've got here is a piece of um, 30 mil box and I've got some 3 8 UNF studs which come up through two holes in the bottom of the chassis here. You can just make out that nut. I need to get a light for you to see it. You can just make out there's a stud coming through with a nut there. I'll show you all this tomorrow after it's welded up. Um, and you may ask yourself, why did I use 3 8 rather than M10? Have a little think about that. And then we've got some brackets on here and this is just to stop the, the twisting motion of this tube because what I don't want to do is twist the chassis. So I just want to be able to hold it rigid and then when this gets bolted to one of these like like this one is here then obviously that will be all gusseted up so it can't twist. So if you can imagine um, if you can imagine standing with a broom holding a broom up by the end of its handle it would try and twist your wrist off um, but if you actually braced your wrist so it was solid the broom wouldn't be able to twist your wrist so that's what I'm trying to do is, is stop the twisting action actually on the chassis so well there we go so um i think tomorrow we'll get it up on its lift and uh 
up on the um, up on the rotisserie. So um, just so the weather's a bit better. It's just crap. It's getting windy again now. So um, if anybody knows what that yellow splodge of paint is for, I'd love to know. So um, the best bit of paint on the vehicle, well, on the chassis anyway. So um, right, I'm gonna go and um, have a couple of beers or something, and I'll be back tomorrow. Right, we know it is. Um, this is the next day now, and yep. It's still raining. Uh, basically, um, had a couple of beers last night, looked at this, and as you know, we all do, you look at it and think about it. So I decided to put a bit of an angle on these brackets to, um, to sort of help when it's in its sideways hanging. So that will then um, give it a bit of extra help there. I'm also going to gust it in here. I've got a radius around here, obviously, well down in there where I've cut. If you notice, I've got a washer in here, um, washer on both sides. That is there that will come out on final assembly because I was thinking that once it's all built and solid and, and everything's painted if I leave it without a washer in there when I pull it out it's going to scratch the paint so with it like that when I take the bolt out it should spring back away from the from the chassis and then not scratch the paint um, you also notice I've got here I've got uh, nylock nuts on backwards and the reason I've used them is because they've got a very low contact area so they won't scratch the paint when I put them on after it's painted and also if you want to know how to get nylon nuts on backwards what I've done here is turn the end of the thread <clears throat> down to the minor diameter of the thread and then you can slide the nut on and just wind it and that will have the effect of keeping the, the nut square <clears throat> on the um, on the thread so I need to get some tacks done now get this um, tack welded and then get it off and welded on the bench and then we'll bolt it on solid and then we'll look at this part and getting it so that we've got one of these on there. <clears throat> Let me go and have a cough. And there we go, all welded up. The tape on the centre is just marking the centre line. So I've got the nuts welded in there backwards. You can see they're just nipped up, so when I really do it up, it'll pull the, the nuts over or not. Um, basically, the reason I did that, as I mentioned earlier, if I had them tied up against the chassis, when I pull the frame out, it would scratch the new paint. So if I need to put a washer in there, I can. When I take the bolt out, the washer would just fall out rather than scratch the paint. And then if we look up in here, as I said earlier, we've got the uh, if you can see, you can just make them out in there. We've got the 3 8 UNF nuts in there, welded onto studs. I've got a stud showing you under there. I don't know if you can pick up on that. The camera's going to like it or not, I don't know. But it's basically, there's a stud in there. So basically, because it's a manifold stud, we've got the, the bit on the top to just rest the nut on. And then we can get in there with our fingers and screw it on. Um, Brackets are all welded on as you can see and not the best welding in the world but um, they're on there and uh, tidied up all this radius to all off and everything so there we go um, now what I've got to do is fit this part on which is the swivel that goes into the other part these parts down here which are the, um, the rotisserie but I need to make sure it's the same height as the back here's Jess come to join in Hello right, Jess what are you doing? Um, yeah, so the that part's got to go in there, and I've got this this Clark table to show you. It's a pump up thing. They're absolutely brilliant. Five hundred kilograms. This one means it can lift five hundred kilograms. Just get down. Nobody wants to look at your bottom. Go on, go on. And um, yeah, basically now. So what I've done, I've set that at five hundred and sixty-five millimeters, which is the height to the bottom of the tube. So if I sit it on there like that up against the um, frame and well, that's the right height so I can start measuring and, uh, and doing some brackets. The other thing I need to make sure is that this part here is actually horizontal 
obviously if it's on an angle it will try and twist itself off as you rotate the chassis so it needs to be horizontal so um let me get that done and i'll come straight back and there we go so we can see i've got it set up on there now we've got a spirit level on there and now the, the actual black tube there is square to the ground um well, square to the ground remember if you're in your garage like i am they've normally got a slope going out so if you put a spirit level on you're going to see that sort of thing where the garage floor isn't flat all i've done is use the chassis take the straight part of the chassis down here put a spirit level on there and use that as your datum for for straightness so um, as you can see we've got the center marked on there center marked on the plate but straight away i've noticed we've got an issue if you look at this now like this when I put the actual upright on here, as this as it swings round, it's going to be very, very close to these dumb irons. And what I'm worried about if I catch my hand in there or something, that I'll just take my hand off. So I'm going to actually have to space this out away from that box. So what I'm going to do is put two vertical uprights on that plate, and then gusset those uprights into this into this tube. So um, I'm going to get on and do that now, and then I'll come back. At last, we're done. So you can see now that I've welded it up, and you can see that we've got the, the spacing to bring it out away from that plate. Um, time was getting on, it's like 7 o'clock now, so I was sort of rushing a little bit at the end, so some of the welds aren't so, aren't so pretty as I would have liked them to be. But, um, you know, it's, it's strong and it's all together. So we've got that nice and square, so, the, um, so this tube is actually square to the ground. I've got a feeling it's got a bit of an angle on that. I've got a feeling looking at it, it looks like it's welded on that way. I might have to put a couple of washers under here to, to bring it around because it does actually look like it's bent. Um, I'll check that in a minute with the square. But now we've got all the, um, all the ends and everything as you can see all gusted up. And this lot here, so this is all braced to these tubes. I've got tubes welded inside that box section there. So all in all it should be very solid and we've also got gussets here as you can see to take the the twist out on the on the side load so um yeah i think all in all i think it should be good enough uh, at the end of the day the worst that can happen is the chassis will fall off mm. <laughs> let me show you how it fits right so as you can see here i've got on the end i've got 3 8 unf exhaust manifold studs and with that pin on the end there, sorry I'm off camera, right? that pin on the end there, that means I can actually push this up through and it will pick up on the nuts and washers that are sat inside the chassis. So I can just come along, find the hole, push that up in both sides and it should have picked up, yes it has picked up the nut and the washer which is just placed on top of the hole. Has anybody managed to guess yet why I use 3 8 UNF instead of 10 mil? This side's the same and that is on there. Because in a moment all will become clear. So that's, that's held up in place. By the way, if you want to make these, those two studs are 710 millimetres apart. This through here. Okay, and then this one, this is basically just M10 studding, and um, I've turned the end down to give it a guide and to help with the um, getting the Nybot nuts on. Wind these in. Just let me just touch. Just finger tight. And this is why, guys. I use 3 8 UNF rather than M10. M10 nuts, as we know, are generally 17 millimetres. This is a 17 mil ratchet spanner. It won't go in that hole. But this one, 
because 383 f is 9 16 and this is a 14 mil battery spanner which fits you can get in there Tighten that up. Same with this one. That one's not down enough yet for the ratchet to work. There we go, so that one's done up. I'm just going to give these a little nip. Just to pull them over, and then we can put a another nut on there just to lock it all in place same on this side that'll do the job we'll find out tomorrow and I'll show you on camera I'll see you tomorrow guys right then here we are on a windy cold but dry Friday evening down in Gloucester apparently the north of England is going to get a load of rain again poor souls anyway let's get on with this let's get this up on its spit so I've got the uh, you can see we've got the frame on the back now notice I've got the music turned off um, people have moaned about the radio being on and Mike said he could hardly hear me so I am um, listen to Mike because he's he is the god of Land Rovers Britannica restorations look him up um, right so front frame is made rear frame is made and bolted on so I promised you at the beginning of the last video I would show you how to easily make yourself a rotisserie there's a company called SGS that make a lot of tools they make engine stands engine cranes dollies all sorts of stuff really really good company and the prices are amazing absolutely amazing they do this basic engine stand which i think is like 25 quid or something maybe 30 pound absolutely unbelievable really really cheap stuff and yeah it's not the fan best quality in the world i mean look at the welds the welds aren't the best in the world but who cares you know they're better than some of mine and the thing is as long as it holds it's absolutely fine because you and i working from home how many times are we going to use this stuff? How many times are you going to use an engine crane? Well, engine stand, this one here that my TDCI engine is on, I've had this thing probably oh, 12 years, 7 years, 10 years say. And I think this is the third time I've used it. So, you know, I only use it for bigger, heavier engines because it's got the double legs. You've got less, less risk of them. If I took the engine out of a Mustang, I would definitely put it on that one. But if you use like one of these narrower ones with the single where you've just got the, the leg here and the wheels at the front, you need to be really careful because if you turn the engine over, it can fall over. So basically what you do is you go and buy yourself an SGS engine stand and what you get is this piece, obviously without this piece of steel in the middle, I've extended it. And you also get this piece, which is the longitudinal, but you'll see all this go together in a minute, so you'll see what I mean. And then on the front of there, as you can see, there's an L-shaped bracket. That is for a bar to go on with two wheels. So even this one is a four wheel lift. You get a couple of casters, but I wanted to raise it because I want to use bigger casters because my floor, as you can see, it's not very flat. So I need a fairly large wheel to roll over. Then this is what you get with the, with the, um, with the engine stand. You get this here. This is the crossbar with a, with a metal wheel at each end. Obviously not steering, it doesn't need to. But I wanted something wider to give me more stability on a rotisserie. So I've got this piece of, I don't know what is it one and a half by four um or no one and a half by three i guess and it's just a piece of um, 10 gauge box and basically um i've replaced this this here with this okay and then put some bigger casters on the end of it if you notice one is swiveling one isn't if you notice both of these swivel you need to put one solid okay when you make these engine stands have one end not swiveling 
otherwise if it's all swiveling when you put your load sideways it all just rolls away from you but if you have this like this you can do that you could put some brakes on them but then your casters get more expensive and then finally I've made up these little one inch box section bits here they've been in the shed so they're all rusty and they go diagonally between here and the bottom to give it some extra support so what I'll do is I'll bolt this together now and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all bolted together and just explain a bit more about it then. Okay, so there you go, you can see it there. There's the upright, we've got the diagonals across there, base, and then the actual bottom part there. And then if you look on the end, you've got this um, here, you've got this flange. And what I do, I use a metal rod, you can see it in the garage roof. Where is my finger? There. And I'll obviously have to adjust the length. And then what I do is put a, bolt the bottoms together to sort of form a big square and it saves the wheels or wanting to um, fall into each other. But there we go, that's the, uh, that's the frames there and now that basically that is going to go into there. The other thing you need to do when you do this, obviously as we know engine stands they're always canted back on here. They're always canted back on this tube so you need to straighten out otherwise obviously as you turn the chassis over you'll be messing up your... Um, you'll be messing up your uh, your angles on here so that needs to be parallel to the ground so I'm going to get this lifted up now remember I said this thing here was handy um, let's look, get the camera on and I'll show you what I mean right so now the rear axle is still attached so all the bolts are loose all the nuts are off I just need to get the, the rear axle out so what I'm going to do is using this this table I can lift lift the chassis okay and I can pull these bolts out and hopefully we got the frames fall out now there we go so that axle's now ready to come out that ball joint looks very loose for something that's only done 16,000 miles that doesn't look good at all um, and the actual radius arms down here, they're all undone. I should be able to hold this up and back out. Now I've kind of guessed the centre of gravity on here, and uh, I'm hoping the extra doesn't, the chassis doesn't fall forward. There's the axle out. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to come out like quite that quickly, but hey, here we go, that's out. It looks like it's a little bit front heavy, so. There we go. The chassis is lifted up on the table balanced on there it's fairly solid for future reference for you guys your center of gravity is about here right on this tr on this flange so you want to be sort of lifting either side of that um, and obviously on the narrow table it's, it's a little bit teetery but it's high enough to get these on so now I can hang this on here like that and that'll pull the back down and that should give me enough on the front to be able to get the front in. Now I just need to cut about another inch. So I could hear you all shouting in your ear. I was trying to get the balance and I still had the front axle attached which was pretty stupid of me. But um, basically now that is sat on those frames so I should be able to just gently lower it down. 
And there we go, it is sat on the rotisserie. Let's keep that one forward. It looks like yeah, the chassis will kind of stay in the centre. Okay, so obviously on your engine stand, you get this pin in here, which is this pin, and that will keep everything. Oops. I'll put it in after, only two hands. But the other thing I've done, I've drawn a hole in here, and I've got this little um, bolt and bush that goes in there, and that'll stop it sliding backwards. So it stops it sort of sliding off. There we go, guys. There she is on the rotisserie, and now I can spin around. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go right over because I think the axles might be in the way. If I just pull this pin out, I'm not sure if this is going to go. No, the rear axle's in the way on the spring hanger, but there she is over at 90 degrees, so you can work on it like that. I can get around the other side and work there. Or if I want to, I can bring it up like so and swing it over the other way like so. And there we go. And there she is on the side again. Obviously, it's only because the axle's in the way that I can't swing it over now. It does feel a little bit top heavy. And you can see this here. This is why I put the bar in the centre because I want to push these wheels apart so they're on the ground because what it's trying to do. It's trying to sort of do this, so to get a bar in there before I start playing with it too much, um, for fear of breaking something. But basically, that is it. Now I can leave it like this overnight and uh, do with these axles and stuff in the morning. But um, yeah, I'm really chuffed, really, really pleased with that that's come out. And um, it was a lot of work, but uh, I think at the end of the day, I think it's really, really worth it. The light's glaring off my head, isn't it? Let me come on this side. So yeah, really, really think it was worth it. And um, now it's going to be a lot easier for me to work on the underneath of the chassis and I can turn it upside down and wax oil it so I know that the wax is really got everywhere. And uh, yeah, wax oil on its side, wax oil it on the right way up. You know, it's um, really, really good. So after all this work, we will have a mint painted chassis. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.